Hi, this is Greg with Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around a Shore Track 7x16 heavy duty low profile dump trailer. It's a 14,000 pound GVW. As shown here, the trailer is equipped with an optional scissor hoist. Let's take a walk around the trailer. We'll show you some of the standard features as well as take a closer look at the optional scissor. So up front, the unit's got a 2 and 5 16 inch cast adjustable coupler. It's got a six hole adjustable. Notice they do a nice job reinforcing the uh, front coupler. They do a setback 7,000 pound drop leg jack. Notice the jack is a four bolt bolt on, easy for replacement. Also notice the uh, drop foot jack. If you're not familiar, you'd simply pull a pin, the inner leg's gonna drop down. And then of course you've got your adjustment through the outer sleeve as well. Of course they've got some Safety chain sealed seven pin plug. Notice there is a plug holder, and this is a seven blade plug. Pretty standard equipment on most pickup trucks today. The wiring is grommeted and it's also ran in frame. Short Track uses a lockable toolbox. They put an integrated 110 volt charger in, simply plug house current. You can keep your battery maintained. So typically they would do a group 24 battery as do most in the industry. On 16 footer, short track jumps to a group 21 battery. This is a 205 amp hour battery. Notice the uh, cranking amps really are kind of irrelevant on a dump trailer. The 205 would be your amp hours would be the important number here. That simply means you got about a time and a half the capacity of what you would get on a standard group uh, 24 battery. So also next to that is the Genius uh, Charger. This particular charger uh, we've had good luck with. Uh, that would be of course for keeping your 110 volt charger charged up. Now this is showing that that's a 1.1 amp hour. You try and focus there a little bit for you. So a 1.1 amp hour and you've got a 205 amp hour battery. That means you've got to put this uh, uh, battery on for charge for an extended period. This isn't just an overnight uh, charge that'd be more of a weekend or a one week charge to get that fully charged if it is discharged So you'll notice the pump is a power up gravity down. It's got a oversized reservoir again. That would be for the For the gravity down. They've got the pump pressure set at 3,000 psi on this particular unit It's got a six inch tube tongue six inch tube mainframe one thing Short Track does that's different than some in the industry, typically the uh, tongue would not be a full wrap. Most in the industry are going to stop the tongue right about here. They do a full wrap and it's kind of a, a nice design. They've got the bulkhead set back farther uh, than some. So basically the tongue terminates where the bulkhead is. On the scissor hoist, you're going to get more stroke than you typically would on a dual ram. So generally on a dual ram, your push point's gonna be from about the center point of the fender. On a scissor that can stroke farther, you're gonna mount farther forward. You'll notice your mount spot on a scissor is almost always the front side of the fender. So some folks ask what's better, scissor or dual ram? And the answer kind of is they both will do the job, but a scissor is gonna gain more leverage. So they both work the same way. They're both horizontal trying to go vertical, so they're trying to redirect force. But a scissor being mounted give or take three foot farther forward, uh, will certainly give it more leverage and make it a little bit more efficient. So as far as efficiencies go, dual rams are rated to about 40% efficient. Scissors are rated to about 60% efficient. Short Track also does offer telescopic hoists on smaller dumps on 16 footers, it's not available. A scissor would be the uh, most premium hoist per se that you can get on their uh, 16 footer. Now you'll notice in Texas, or Texas brand trailers, which would encompass your PJs, Big Texas, Diamond Seas, Lamars, uh, Iron Bull, et cetera, Load Trail, they almost exclusively on a 14K 16 foot will use a 516 cylinder. Short track on this is using a six inch cylinder. So it's a little bit of an oversized hoist. They also use a champion hoist, which uses 100,000 pound tensile strength steel in the hoist as opposed to standard 36 or sometimes 48,000 pound tensile strength steel. 
Again, Short Track does use the tube tongue, tube frame, thought process behind that. Tube resists the torsional load more so than wood angle or channel or some of the other extrusions you would see. They also do a lot of, um, a lot of extra detail in their 16 footers. So this piece of plate that you see over the axle area is not on any other size trailer except for a 14 foot telescopic and then it's standard on the 16 foot trailers. Again, that's a critical area. Short Trek does a nice job with their engineering department of identifying those critical areas and reinforcing them appropriately. Also notice the back side of the spring hanger, got a piece of angle there. Again, that's not on some of the other size dumps, but again, they recognize a 16 footer. You've got some critical areas. They take the time to uh, go above and beyond. Also notice on the underside of the tube bed frame where the hinge points mounted, they also reinforce that area. Also on the back side of the tube, you'll notice they cap it, put a bushing and put a uh, greaser at the hinge point there. A lot of nice little detail they put in. Also the integrated body stiffener or the keyway on the side of the trailer, another nice feature. A lot of manufacturers don't do this. Some that do just weld it on. This is actually fabricated and formed in, so there's no gap there. Uh, you know, I know you can silicone it and try and keep it shut, but uh, salt, well, salt and uh, acid rain are going to work their way down in and get your rust streaks over time, but not on this setup where it's integrated. So you also do the front and rear bulkhead standard. So you got a slot for a board going down the side. They've also got the stake pockets if you choose to build it up. Notice the uh, uh, prep for the tarp up front there. And then we also like the bulkhead uh, as it seems to deflect some of the wind to keep your uh, mulch and your um, wood shavings and whatnot, your lighter debris in the bed. So a fourth benefit of the side extension or the front and rear bulkhead would be it puts your lights up where people can actually see them. Uh, we like that as it certainly makes you more visible. So something new for 2018, Short Track started prepping all their trailers uh, for rear skid steer jacks. If that's something the customer chooses, we generally have these in stock, simply need to ask for them. Again, skid steer jack stand makes it nice for whenever you're going to load. Notice the fenders are a double broke fender, not a single broke. Gives some extra strength uh, to the fender. So again, two brakes would be stronger than one, be referred to as a double broke. They also silicone the joint between the bed and the fender. And then you've got a rope ring uh, for strapping down your, or bunging down your tarp kit. Also where the wiring comes out of your bed frame, you notice they silicone it shut. Also put a prop on the fender to give extra strength to that area. So one thing Short Track does a little bit different, their bed frame here is box tube, not a, again, an angle or a channel. But they use a four inch cross member. Uh, many in the industry are gonna use a four inch bed frame. Sometimes we see six or three inch, but universally almost everybody uses a four inch, I'm sorry, a three inch cross member. Short track on these uses a four inch uh, floor cross member. Their space on this particular unit uh, as needed is, is generally what they spec it as. I would say that's gonna equate on this unit probably to about a 16 to maybe 18 inch on center, certainly close enough for what the average user is going to use this for. Another detail we see a little different on short track would be the plating on the end of the ramp. This is important because over time I've seen some, and we've carried some brands that use quarter inch plate, and over time quarter inch plate is going to bend and it's going to bend straight. That's half inch plate. A uh, little detail at the end of that ramp is going to make this probably last the life of the trailer, unlike the ones that use quarter. So the way this ramp is going to work that's gonna bear on the back end of the trailer and bear weight down. That's gonna simply be a retainer to keep the ramp from pulling away from the trailer. So this is a 16 footer. 16 footers generally would have some of the longer overhangs, uh, but you'll notice even with this trailer fully extended on a scissor hoist, still got plenty of ground clearance here. Actually appears the trailer is just a touch nose high. So again, you got sufficient clearance. Trailers equipped with 7,000 pound axles. They've got the newer forward adjusting brakes, uh, easy lube hubs. So easy lube hubs would simply mean you take the black cap off here, there's a grease dirt behind it, and a homeowner can do their own bearing maintenance. It's equipped with a 23580 R16 10 ply radial tire.
standard this would come through with a white wheel we can also do them with a silver mod or we also keep eight lug aluminum wheels short track does a slipper spring suspension standard you also notice that they put a wet bolt or a grease zert on them uh, as standard equipment so you can service uh, the slipper spring suspension short track does a nice job with their wiring and just overall generally their finished quality so you'll notice the brakes are all sealed and molded the wiring where it comes out of the frame there is uh, grommeted out generally where they come out of frame too it's also in shrink tube you'll notice the wiring's all shrunk underneath they put a tool tray this would be ideal for a pick or shovel or a ratchet strap or bungee cords different things got a little bit of room left in the box but generally speaking that little bit of room you could probably cut put a quarter or so of hydraulic fluid if you need this being a gravity system generally speaking you wouldn't need hydraulic fluid whereas on a power up power down unit if the battery dies and it gravities down generally those guys will need to keep an extra quarter or so of fluid but on a gravity uh, you're simply pushing that fluid back out into the reservoir trailer comes equipped with two foot sides two foot sides uh, used to be an industry standard now we start to see some of them with uh, 20 inch sides but again it still does have the two foot sides trailer weighs in about 4,000 pounds empty it means you got about 10,000 pound of legal payload left and then you've also got about 2,000 pound or so of tongue weight trailer comes standard with a combo spreader gate or what we'd refer to as a two-way gate Basically, you can open it up in barn door or you can come to the driver's side. You can set a chain and then you can tailgate in your stone the way you want. So another nice feature about the gate, it wraps the whole way back around the trailer. Instead of coming to a 90, basically it comes all the way around and it would chain and come back at an angle as opposed to the ones that come to a 90. Problem with those generally, the operator gets out this side. That side oftentimes is a pile of stone. They open the door, they back up, they put it up and don't realize that they just tweak their gate. D-ring placement on short track, also we tend to like, they put the uh, rings just at the bottom of the sidewall so they just barely touch the floor, keep them out of the way. They also up front uh, do a fifth ring. So you've got your four in the corners and then you've got a fifth ring. They also full seam weld the uh, floors on their trailers there's no stitch welding short track powder coats their trailers uh, one of the things i wish every customer could see the plant they do a phenomenal job with their prep a lot of guys uh, ask what type of paint the trailer has but really to be honest it seems the prep is far more important than the actual finish of the trailer itself they do a nice job with their prep they store all their steel inside they blast the finished product with steel grit, they phosphate wash, and then they have a sealer, like a zinc chromate product that they put on before they powder. Very durable finish. Folks, we keep these in a number of different sizes. We keep them sometimes with the 8,000 pound axle upgrade, some with goosenecks. We do them in different lengths as well. Give us a ring for something that uh, you're looking for that you don't see here. We might be able to get it for you. And again, we keep uh, these in stock in a number of different sizes and configurations. You can reach us at 717-220-4220 or visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com.